Okay, so today we're going to do 8-4 multiplying special cases. And so we're going to start with squaring a binomial, all right? And so there is a huge, huge mistake that is commonly made when squaring a binomial. So I'm going to write this bigger so that we can see it a little bit better on the video especially. But it says x plus 8 in parentheses squared. And what students want to do is they want to distribute the squared term to each of these only. You cannot do that with a binomial because what this means is this whole thing, the whole quantity is squared. So um, it's a, the reason we want to do that is do, because we come off of exponents and we distribute exponents, right? But what this actually means is x plus 8 times x plus 8, like that. Squared means times itself. Do you agree? Yeah. Well, we just learned that when we do this, right, we can either use the box method or the FOIL method um, to do this. But if I do this, I'm going to use the box method over here to show you. Okay. And so I would set it up like this. So if I do that, I get x times x, which is x squared. And then I get x times 8, which would be 8x. And then down here, I get 8 times x, which again would be 8x. And then here, I get 8 times 8, which would be 64, right? So what's our final answer to um, squaring this binomial? What's going to be the final answer? Malcolm, go ahead. x squared. Not squared. Plus 64. 8x plus 8x gets combined to give you 16x. Okay? And 64. So it does, like, if we were to just distribute this, right, to both of those, um, then we would get the x squared and we'd get the 64. But what term would we miss? The 16x. So with a binomial like this, you have to make sure that you um, realize that it's times itself, the whole binomial, and there's that middle term that ends up coming out of that, okay? And so that's the first thing that we need to know when doing this. All right, let's do under here um, the got it. Let's do part B so that we have enough space. Try that on your own. It says 2x plus 9 squared. And you can do it whatever way you want to do it. I'm going to do it like this. See if I can cover mine up. Can you see it? Don't say maybe. It's supposed to be a secret. Did I do it? Did I make it without showing anybody? Okay. Oh, my, my wedding ring on there. Ooh, woo. Yep. Okay, what did you get for your final answer? Alejandro, what'd you get? Did you say 30x or 36x? Okay. Yeah, you probably read it as a 0, not a 6. 4x squared plus 36x plus 81 should have been the final answer. How many of you got that? 
Super. Now, the only thing you have to do now is remember that these are special cases. Remember not to just distribute that too. You can't do that because you will miss the middle term on the binomials, okay? They are tricky questions. All right, same thing here, right? So if you have to um, do a story problem like this, these are challenging. So it says um, a square outdoor patio is surrounded by a brick walkway as shown. So this is the walkway, the black part here, the threes. What's the area of only the walkway? Okay, so um, think about this now. The area of the whole thing, we would have to do x plus 6 times x plus 6. Do you agree? For the whole thing. But that would include this middle part, wouldn't we? All right, so let's do that first. x plus 6. And some of you might be able to know what this is right now, these simpler ones as we've done them, without the box now. x plus 6 times x plus 6, this gives me x squared, this gives me 6x, this gives me 6x, because they're the same, right? And then this last one gives me what? 36. So I get x squared plus 12x plus 36 is the total. What do I need to subtract out of that total, though? x times what? Which part is not paved? The center, right? So if this is the whole thing and I subtract out just the center, would I get just the paved part? I would, right? So the center, if I want to subtract now, I want to subtract x times x. Is that the area of that? What's x times x? x so I take this, I'm going to subtract out x squared. Do I have to, what do I have to do to do that? I'm combining this with what I learned earlier. Taking it out of the x squared. Yeah, technically I, I could line this up, right? x squared and then minus x squared here. Those are my like terms. And then my 12x, oops plus 36 is on the top, what would I fill in under here? Zeros, right? Zero and zero. So this one ends up with zero, right? I can kind of cancel that out. I don't have to write that in. I'm left with 12x plus 36. What piece of information was not needed? Yeah, that three feet there. We didn't need that, did we? That's it. That's the answer. Okay, let's go. All right, next one. Um, so I will come back to the examples in a second, uh, like the key concept, but I wanna actually show you the what happens here. Um, and then I'll show you the key concept. So it says, what is the simpler form of x to the third power plus eight times x to the third power minus eight? I'm just gonna write that a little bit bigger. Um, so, Actually, I'm just going to write the box. x to the third power plus 8. And then along the other side, I'm going to do x to the third power minus 8, like this. Okay. This one's a little more challenging in that. Uh, doing the first one, you got to remember what to do. What's x to the third power times x to the third power? Go, Carla. That's right, x to the sixth. Okay, what's x to the third power times positive 8? Keep going, Carla. 8x to the third power. Okay, so what's x to the third power times negative 8? There we go. And then finally, negative 8 times positive 8 is negative. Thank you. Okay, so we know that these are like terms, but what ends up happening here? It's Zero. Do you include that usually in your answer? So our final answer is x to the 6 minus 64. Why did this one end up with no middle term, but this one up here when I did these by each other ended up with a middle term? Okay, somebody raise your hand and tell me what is the difference. Go, Ivan. 
versus a positive and a positive. Okay. So here's the thing, right? If it's a positive and a positive or a minus and a minus, they're the same, there's going to end up being a middle term. However, if there is the same binomial, only one's positive and one's negative, that middle term is going to end up canceling out. All right. And so um, just to be sure, though, don't take the shortcut. Do the box. Do the FOIL method to make sure that you don't get it wrong. Okay. Does everyone, does anyone have any questions about that concept? Because the concept's up here, right, written in algebra, it says if you have A plus B times A minus B, you're going to end up having the first term squared minus the second term squared. There will be no middle term. And it'll always end up being a minus in there because a positive times a negative is always a negative. Okay, that's the lesson. Do we have any questions on the lessons today? Beautiful. Okay, let me show you what ones we're going to do. Okay, on, oops, I'm on the wrong side to start. On our, our 8-4, we are not going to do them all. We're going to do sections of them, okay? So the first section, evens in each section I give you, too. So you don't have to do them all. Evens in the first section. So that, it's really 2 through 12, right? Because it's even. And then the back sections, again, evens in these sections. So um, 28 through 39, but evens. And then 46 through 54, but evens only. You might need a separate sheet of paper to attach to it to show the work, all right? It is not going to be something that you can just mentally do. I don't want you to mentally do it. I want you to show the work. No work, no what? No credit. No credit. I will give you no points for no work. Yeah, let's go. Let's math.